Welcome everyone to the Wednesday College Series. Um, today we are so fortunate um, to have uh, Tiffany from University of Alaska and Amanda from over at University of Oklahoma. We were supposed to have Ryder and Drew University. Unfortunately, they are not able to attend today, but I'm hoping to get recorded presentations from them that I can add to the college corner. Um, as I always do, I kind of give you an update on some things that are coming up. Um, uh, let me see if I can change how this, I guess I can't. Um, so just wanted to let you know, um, SDSU is having um, college day coming up April 17th, as is Cal State Fullerton, um, Cal State Pomona, April 10th, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Unfortunately, my slide is, is I don't have this on the right viewing status. Sorry about that, guys. But that is coming up. And then there's also UC campuses are having them all through the month of April. Um, other upcoming college fairs that are going on, April 14th, um, Regional Admissions Counselor of California, April 17th, again, SDSU, April 19th, um, there's the WACAT College Fair, and then April 28th, the RAC College Fair again. Um, for the Western Admissions Counselor uh, for College Admission Counseling Fair on April 19th, they are going to be having workshops on financial aid, how to write essays, navigating the UC and Cal State applications, as well as many universities there that you can hear from. For all of that information, please go to the Scripps Ranch High School Foundation website and go to the College Corner. And that has the listing of all of those college fairs um, and all the links are right on there. So you can access all that information. Also to access the present today's presentation as well as all of the past presentations on the Wednesday College Fair, as well as many two minute videos that have been submitted by admissions counselors, you can go to our YouTube channel, which features the virtual college fair. And when you get there, this is what it looks like. Um, this is kind of a dated um, picture right now, uh, but you can see on there the original Wednesday college series that are on there, as well as many of the two minute videos. Um, we now have, um, I believe it's like 60 different videos on there and upwards of 100 campuses that are represented. So please go and check that out. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing on my computer and hand it over to Tiffany so we can learn about University of Alaska. Hey everyone, so happy to be here with you all today. Thank you so much for having me and I'm excited to share with you a little bit of information about the University of Alaska Anchorage. I am the regional recruiter for UAA, which means that I am on the West Coast in the lower 48 and available to meet with y'all. And as you think about submitting your applications, I'm also the person who can answer questions about the application or just questions about what it's like to move to Alaska from the lower 48. I'm from Southern California myself. I grew up in Vista, so I definitely have that experience uh, moving from so sunny Southern California to what you might think is going to be cold Alaska. It is a really fun adventure, but uh, it's not quite as cold as you might think. It uh, is not always snowing. That's a question that I often get from students. And so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about UAA because I think that um, a lot of students haven't really heard too much about the University of Alaska Anchorage. And so at UAA, we really value our access to adventure and our central location. We have all of that beautiful nature that Alaska is known for, hundreds of miles of trail, some of the best snowboarding, more national park than any other state. And yeah, you can even take a weekend trip to see the glaciers or the Northern Lights. But as the largest city in Alaska, we also offer those urban comforts that you probably come to enjoy, Southern California, shopping, movies, concerts, and definitely a lot more. Uh, for example, we have a downtown, but our downtown um, also hosts the Iditarod for a little bit of time. It runs right through the center. So if you're interested in dog sledding, it can definitely be the place for you. Also, the state's major airport is in town. There is just a short, it's just a short flight away from home. So if you think about it, it's actually faster to fly to Anchorage than it is to drive across the state of California. So maybe it's not quite as far away as you're thinking. On campus, you'd be a part of a thriving community of about 13,000 students. So, um, 
that's really an opportunity to engage in um, all of the things that comes with being at a mid-sized comprehensive university, uh, but you get the added benefits of smaller class sizes. So about uh, half of your classes have less than 20 students because we have an excellent uh, 16 to one student faculty ratio. You can also take some pretty interesting elective courses. So that dog sledding that I mentioned earlier, you can actually take that as an elective course. Not very many universities you can do that. Also, we have interesting electives and things like rafting and ice climbing. And, uh, you know, as a major public comprehensive, um, we have a wide breadth of programs that are available to you. And if you don't know what you want to study, that's, it's a great place to go. Exploratory studies, or you might know it as undeclared, is actually one of our most popular freshman majors. Um, and maybe you've heard, we have some pretty amazing rocks in Alaska. One of our geology courses actually helicopters, helicopter students to the site location. Um, and this really underscores our commitment to experiential learning. With more geologists per capita than any other state, we're really able to bring employers to campus for on-site hiring. Um, and within the College of Arts and Sciences, we also have some amazing programs in psychology, anthropology, other arts and social sciences. And then we have additional distinct colleges um, for things like health, where you'll find programs like kinesiology, dietetics, dental hygienics, uh, and then called a college of business and public policy, programs like um, accounting or international business, a college of technical education, so um, programs in things like professional piloting and culinary. Uh, and then engineering has a distinct college. Um, uh, and we partner really closely uh, with industry um, in, in our engineering college, industries like ConocoPhillips. Uh, and our engineers have gone on to work at companies like Google, Tesla, and Garmin. So across all of our programs, um, you'll really find exceptional, uh, e exceptional high quality education. And it opens doors to research opportunities in some of our major research projects uh, through the Alaskan Center for Conservation Science and the Natural Resource Institute. And we offer students really the opportunity to study natural sciences in nature. Um, and that is not really available um, outside of Alaska. So with over 100 clubs, Division II athletics, sporting equipment rentals, and even a new esports lounge, you'll also find plenty of ways to live your amazing story outside of the classroom. Uh, and you can continue that amazing story all over the world. UAA is one of a few campuses in the US that's actually permitted to participate in the North to North Exchange, which focuses on study abroad opportunities uh, related to Arctic research. Or if you're ready to take a break from the northern winter and you want to try a semester in Hawaii, Puerto Rico, or Las Vegas, uh, you can do that with National Student Exchange. Exchange programs are really exciting because you essentially pay the same tuition, but you get to go to a totally different university for a semester or a couple of semesters. And um, then importantly, we're also ranked number one for long-term return on investment amongst our peer institutions. Um, and so what that basically means is that we offer that high quality uh, education that I've been talking to y'all about at a really affordable price because we participate in WUI, the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, which keeps our tuition in around the $10,000 range for our California students. Um, which means that it can actually be less expensive to attend UAA than to attend the University of California. So it kind of dispels that myth that it's always more expensive to go out of state. And as an open access university, WUI is not competitive. There's no essay requirement, standardized tests aren't required, and in fact the entire application only takes about 15 minutes to complete. Uh, and currently there's not a fee to submit, and we're rolling at admissions. So if any of you are seniors or you know seniors that are still looking for their university next year, UAA is still an option for them. So I'm happy to help you all start your adventure. I'm gonna drop some links in the chat to give you a little bit more information. One of those links is to a tour. Uh, and you notice that I didn't use pictures in this conversation because I'm inviting you to do our online tour to really get a true sense of what UAA looks like uh, because that's really gonna capture it much better than just a couple of pictures on a slide.
So definitely take that opportunity and uh, reach out to me with any questions that you may have in the future. I look forward to helping you all become future sea wolves. All right, I guess that means it's me. Uh, my name is Amanda Marsh. I'm with the University of Oklahoma. I am your neighbor here in San Diego County. So I also live in America's finest city. So greetings, great to be talking to you all today. Um, I also am going to throw some links in the chat so you'll see if they're going to be from me or from Tiffany. So um, feel free to be checking there as well while I go ahead and get rocking and rolling over here. Uh, so I am a graduate of the University of Oklahoma, and I always like to tell people that so that they know I am incredibly biased. They gave me a degree and a paycheck, so, you know, take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt. The number one question that I get asked is, why OU? Uh, I attended OU from out of state myself. I did not grow up in Oklahoma. I didn't grow up cheering for the Sooners, so I was not familiar with any traditions, not familiar with campus. That's the number one question I got attending. And now working for the university here on the West Coast is the number one question I get as well. Why OU? Um, so I'm going to share some of my YOUs with you today. So the number one YOU, campus itself. Uh, it's a contained walking campus. It's about 15 minutes to walk from the dorms to your furthest building. So really easy to get through. No cars go throughout. It really is that quintessential college town, traditional college campus where Every building looks the same, whether it was built in 1907 or 2007, that you really get that nice vibe. We're 22,000 undergraduate students, so we are considered a large public, um, but our class sizes are smaller, with average class size being 32. Only 4% of our classes ever have more than 100 students, so you're not going to have a ton of those huge lecture halls that you're walking into. Even though I'm very outgoing, even I find those learning situations really intimidating. The other reason is that students can get to us. It is easy access to Norman, Oklahoma. So while the state might be a little far off for you, it really is just going to be for direct flights. It's under three hours with a layover. It's four and a half. You lay over in Phoenix or Denver. I've done it a time or 700 in my life coming from San Diego. And then 25 minutes to Oklahoma City. So that airport access, internship access, all of that is right there for you. So when you want to go see the NBA, when you want to go to a major concert, the Dodgers have a farm team there. You have all those opportunities for you up in the city and then Norman really is your college town. We're a tier one research institution like your UC system here. So you're going to be getting that same caliber of education, which is great. YOU, the academics. You can see that we have over 170 different programs of study. So there really is something for everybody. When you're applying to OU, you're being admitted to the university as a whole, not necessarily any degree granting program. There are a few caveats to that because we always like to keep it interesting and slightly confusing in college admissions. So the few programs that you will actually be directly admitted to would be anything in the performing arts. And then if you're interested in our aviation pilot program, so if you're wanting to fly, those programs really need to stick to our November 1 early action deadline as well. Otherwise, on our campus, we have the National Weather Center, a Complete Health Science Center. So anything you want to study on a human being, you can do at OU. So for your pre-nursing, OT, PT, med, whatever it is that you want to be involved in, we're going to have all those professional programs. We have engineering facilities with 18 different specialties of engineering, everything from aerospace on down. We have our own school of biomedical engineering, so lots of opportunities there. Uh, University College is what our freshmen go into when you're not admitted to a degree granting program, which will be 99% of you. And then we have an umbrella honors college that can serve all of our students regardless of major. November 1 is early action deadline. December 15th will be our scholarship deadline. And I'll talk more on that in just a minute. We are on the Common App, the Coalition, and then we also have our own OU app. So we don't care which way you apply, as long as you do it on time, so you're considered for all the scholarship opportunities. Uh, if you're a junior right now, it's going to open up on August 1st for you. So August 1st of your senior year is when you can apply. We are test optional for the next five years, so you don't need to worry about testing if that's not something you want to submit. If you do, we are one of the schools that you could apply without test scores and after admitted, submit them to us either for scholarship purposes or for course placement purposes, if that's something you want to do. So you can change your mind with us later. What you can't do is apply with test scores and then tell us you want us to unsee them. That's not a possibility. So those are just some highlights of our academic programs, but with 170 different majors, there really is something for everybody. My next YOU, studying abroad. 
no matter where you go to school, I know not everyone that I talk to is going to go to Oklahoma. We can't all be perfect. I completely understand that. The number one thing I encourage you to do is to please look into study abroad opportunities while you are at a university. Um, I know that Tiffany mentioned that it's going to be the same price when you're going abroad. So your financial aid, your scholarships are going to travel with you. We have two of our own study centers, which you'll see are in Arezzo, Italy and Puebla, Mexico, and then exchange opportunities that we get you to 80 countries, 200 different cities. 40% of students at OU will study abroad during their time at the university, and we want to get that over 50%. So definitely look into those opportunities, no matter where you are going, it is the easiest and cheapest way you will ever get overseas in your life. There's not another point in my life that I'm going to say to my boss, hey, I'm just going to take a summer ab abroad to Arezzo, Italy. And um, that was where I got to study abroad. Our campus there is an old monastery that the university bought and I was able to study and live there for a summer, which was incredible. So once again, definitely look into those opportunities. Why OU? The cost. Starting out, we are right within the same price range as your UC system here for all in. So make sure we're not just looking at tuition and fees because yes, you are paying an out of state tuition and fee at OU versus your in state here. But you need to consider the cost of living in Norman, Oklahoma versus Los Angeles or Berkeley or anywhere else. So total cost of attendance were right in line with your UCs. A little bit easier to get into. I think just about everywhere except for the Ivy Leagues is a little bit to get into than some of our UCs. Easy to get out in four years. We have no impacted programs. We will get you in and out in four years. And we do have guaranteed scholarships as well. Whether you apply with test scores or not, you do have academic scholarship opportunities. Um, and those are available to all students who meet the qualifications during our holistic review. And then we do competitive scholarships based on your intended major, your community service, and your leadership throughout high school. YOU for a lot of students is the student life, the big school spirit. A lot of people know us because they've seen us on Sports Center. I'm okay if you just know us as a football school right now. There's plenty more to learn about us. We'd love to get you out there to see it. We are currently open. We are accepting students for tours and our big open house is coming up on April 24th. We still have space for you. So feel free to come if you are an admitted senior or if you are a current junior, you are able to come visit us right now. Our campus tours are capped at 10 students each outside social distance math. All of that is required, but you are able to come see us, which is great. Hopefully you've seen this QR code that I've had on every slide. Um, you can scan that and get added to our mailing list. You'll actually be able to link it directly to today so that I'll know that I met you through scripts. Um, and I'm also going to be sure to throw a link in the chat where you can easily get information as well. And I know it was mentioned at the beginning, but just wanted to put that out there. So the Regional Admissions Counselors of California, there will be 100 different institutions who are out of state who are looking to get more Californians on their campus. And um, so that's what RAC is. And I'm one of the board members there that you'll see our two dates. Registration is open right now for students, for counselors, for parents to so please come and learn more. Each session will have six different universities who are presenting to you. So you'll, you'll get six minutes from each school. So I'm also going to put the link in there for you all to be able to register for those college fairs coming up next week and then two weeks later as well. Um, each school, like I said, gets six minutes and it's 45 minutes per session. So lots of different opportunities to learn more about going out of state. While we know that we have incredible in-state systems here, you all also know that it is very competitive. Sometimes it can be hard to get into your degree program. Sometimes it can be hard to get out in four years. So those are all considerations to take into account as you're shaping your college list. And we're really just about giving you as many options as possible. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and see what questions or concerns we have. All right, great. Thank you, Amanda. So um, both to Tiffany and, oh, I was going to mention the students, um, anybody have any questions, you can either ask them live or go ahead and put them in the chat if you like. Um, and then uh, just to start us off, uh, Amanda and Tiffany, could you share with us something about your mascot or a, a, a fun tradition on your campus? Sure. Uh, so our mascot is the sea wolf, um, and it is just kind of like a mythical creature. Uh, and um, we think of it very fondly, uh, and it uh, serves as our mascot um, for one of our main and exciting events, which are our hockey, um, our hockey matches. So I think that's kind of like one of the campus traditions that and most people really enjoy is going to hockey. Uh, we also have basketball um, and the sea wolf serves us proudly there as well. <laughs> All 
Excellent. So at OU, we are the Sooners, and what people yell to each other when they see someone wearing OU gear is one person yells boomer and the other person yells sooner back. Um, your fun fact is it makes absolutely no sense as a saying. It's like saying jumbo shrimp. It's an oxymoron. Um, so if you go to your U.S. history textbooks, um, boomer sooner will actually be in there even if you don't know it, but it is the land rush once Oklahoma territory, which was native land, when that became white settlement territory, the people who went first when the gun went off and crossed into the territory, they were the boomers. There were people who went a day early and staked out overnight their claim to their homestead, and those were the Sooners because they got there first. So the boomers and the Sooners actually hated each other. Um, and now OK Boomer has become a thing, which is highly confusing to me as a person, um, as we make fun of old people, it has nothing to do with our university and when we yell boomer Sooner at each other. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we had a question that came in from one of the students. They were asking about um, electrical engineering programs on your campuses. Sure, yeah, I'm happy to, to go. Um, we have a whole college of engineering at UAA, which uh, means that we have really well developed infrastructure for advising engineering students in, in general. Uh, and then, as I kind of briefly mentioned when I was I was going over, uh, we also have a lot of partnerships with industry. It's something that UAA really values. Uh, and, and so that really translates into engineering, especially because there's such a high demand for engineers in Alaska. So my engineering faculty and advisors are constantly telling me these stories about engineers getting placed into really not just internships, but full on careers. And they've told me as early as their sophomore year, uh, but on average, um, I mean, maybe not on average, but anyone that would be looking for something like that, they often are, it's happening um, for seniors. So if you uh, are looking for a job in engineering, um, UAA is definitely a place that can help you get there. Also for uh, our out of state students, you know, it's not just in Alaska, getting that experience so early on can really help you make that transition back to California or anywhere in the lower 48 as well. Excellent. And yes, we have it at OU. It is one of our designations that you can get your degree in electrical engineering. And engineering is a school that even though you're not admitted directly into, you do want to be marking that as your intended major because they do offer additional scholarship opportunities. So that's one of those super well-funded programs um, that are out there. Excellent. And um, Amanda, I, um, could you mention to us more about how much in merit scholarships the kids can potentially get? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the average student from California this year um, that's been admitted is receiving $9,000 per year guaranteed for four years. So that's $36,000 over their four years right off the top of um, the cost of attendance, which gets us in between what the Cal State and the UC prices for California students. Our awards do range from 5,000 per year for all four years up to 14,000 per year for all four years. Um, and if I have any national merit, national awards students, um, national Hispanic, those students, they get to waive all of their out-of-state tuition and the majority of the portion of in-state tuition as well. So um, those are just some of our programs that are out there. And then, like I said, scholarships based on intended major and what you're involved in in high school as well. Excellent. Um, Tiffany, I think you had mentioned before we got started about University of Alaska having a lot of different campuses. Could you tell us a little bit about how that works? Yeah, sure. So the University of Alaska, it's a single legal entity, but we certainly have very distinct universities and only recently have we been kind of even making this transition to being more of a, a single um, entity. So it's still a little bit new. Uh, we are, were formed as kind of more independent. Um, and so that's why I, I represent the University of Alaska Anchorage. Uh, and then my colleagues um, uh, also in, in RAC um, represent the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Um, and the University of Alaska Southeast does not have a uh, regional yet, but maybe, maybe they'll get one in the near future. Um, uh, but essentially, uh, Anchorage is in the south, um, and Fairbanks is in the north. So uh, there is there are definitely some distinctions. Anchorage, we kind of think of ourselves as like the urban wild campus. So Anchorage has a city of about three hundred thousand people, making it the largest city in Alaska. We are also the largest public university in Alaska. 
Um, and so it kind of depends on the vibe that you're going for. If you kind of want this like balanced hybrid of the urban wild, Anchorage is a great place for you. But if you want to be more in the north and really immersed in kind of that Alaska that maybe you've you've been thinking of when you think of Alaska, then Fairbanks is a cool campus for you too. Awesome. All right. Well, I think this brings us to the end of to the, this week's Wednesday College Series. I wanted to thank everybody for attending and especially Amanda and Tiffany for being here today. Thank you so much. Um, this is the final of the spring series for the Wednesday College Series. We'll be starting up again on a weekly basis in the middle of September. I don't yet know what the format will be, but I'll keep you guys all updated on that. Um, and then uh, next week, we will be having a special conference for SDSU admitted students. So if you are an admitted student on this call, uh, feel free to join us next week. And I'll be getting some information out on that. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I wish everybody a great day. Thank you.